Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Trooper Bill Evans, Public Information Officer for the Pennsylvania State Police, Troop P. Wilkes-Barre. I'm joined here today by Troop P. Wilkes-Barre, Criminal Investigation Unit Section Commander, Lieutenant Derek Felsman, as well as Bradford County District Attorney Richard Wilson. I'm also joined here today by the Troop P. Tawanda Criminal Investigation Unit, including Criminal Investigation Unit Supervisor Corporal Jason Rasmus. Today, we'll be speaking with you about the homicide that occurred here in Bradford County last week. First, I'd like to introduce Lieutenant Derek Felsman. Good afternoon, everyone. One week ago today, at approximately 4.30 in the morning, our troopers were made aware of text messages between Rhonda Parker and her estranged husband, Terry Parker. Those text messages indicated that someone had been killed, their body disposed of, and attempts were made to conceal and clean a crime scene. Mere hours after receiving this information, our troopers were able to identify and locate the scene of this horrific crime here in Bradford County. Our troopers were able to identify human remains at that crime scene. Our troopers were able to identify three actors involved with this incident. And by three o'clock in the afternoon, our Pennsylvania State Troopers were able to safely have all three actors in custody. The professionalism and diligence displayed by our troopers in those critical 11 hours is a direct reflection of the hard work put forth by our men and women across the Commonwealth every day. Our troopers take their oath seriously, which helps ensure our department always accomplishes its mission to seek justice, to preserve peace, and to improve the quality of life for all. Now, as many of you are aware, this investigation quickly took us three hours south to the Harrisburg area of our Commonwealth. Troopers from Troop H Harrisburg, Troop H Carlisle, and our department's Bureau of Criminal Investigation assisted us in taking Terry Parker and Summer Hale into custody. I would also like to acknowledge forensic anthropologist Dr. Dennis Dirkmat and his team at Mercyhurst University. They assist law enforcement and our department on a regular basis in identifying human remains in various states of decomposition and mutilation. The one-year-old that Rhonda Parker was allegedly holding when the victim was shot is safe. That is something that has been detailed in the criminal complaint and affidavit of probable cause. There are also allegations of purported sexual acts by our victim that were made in the presence of juveniles. That is actively being investigated as we speak. I can confirm today that those allegations of purported sexual acts by the victim had not been previously reported to state police, they had not been reported to Childline, and they had not been reported to any other law enforcement agency. I would like to acknowledge that three individuals came forward to law enforcement Monday morning with information relative to this incident. That information provided by those three citizens allowed our investigation to move forward quickly in the right direction. Our message today to them is thank you. And our message to everyone in our communities without, throughout the Commonwealth, if you see something or if you hear something that you suspect is criminal in nature, please say something. Please report it to law enforcement authorities so any allegations or anything that may be suspicious can be thoroughly investigated. In this case, what was reported to our troopers early on was horrific. And troopers were able to make great work uh, from the initial dispatch at 4.30 in the morning on Monday morning. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to District Attorney Rich Wilson uh, for further discussion with you all. Thank you for your time. I can tell you a few things 
about this case as it has unfolded. The first thing I'd like to share is my sincere gratitude on, the beh on behalf of Bradford County for the hard work that the folks behind me did, the Pennsylvania State Police. It is incredible to have watched, from my standpoint, first learning of this incident, first learning of the death of Michael Pruitt back in on uh, Monday morning. I was in court, learned of it, and spent much of the day at the Pennsylvania State Police Barracks here in North Wanda, and I can tell you to watch the significant amount of work of these skilled professionals, it was very much an eye-opener for me and great, gave me great confidence. To build on what was already said, I can tell you that the, there is no threat to the public at this time. I think that's very important to, for us to know. The three suspects are in custody, and the folks responsible will have their day in court now on these charges. Uh, so I do, again, thank the Pennsylvania State Police for their hard work on this. As far as the, uh, the suspects are concerned, we have three folks who are charged in the death of Michael Pruitt. They now are uh, in custody and they have attorneys going forward. It's my understanding that the uh, first person here that we're talking about, Rhonda Parker, she is now represented by our own Chief Public Defender, Patrick Byrne. It's my understanding that Terry Parker is represented by a lawyer from Scranton by the name of Cornelius Rodivel. And the third person in custody, Summer Heil, is represented by an attorney from the Williamsport area named Matthew Deemer. All three suspects have uh, attorneys representing them for any future proceedings and are, of course, presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. So what we have next, as far as scheduling is concerned, would be the preliminary hearing stage currently scheduled before Magisterial District Judge Jonathan Wilcox over in Troy, and that is scheduled for March 27th at 2 p.m. All three defendants are scheduled at that time. Whether a hearing takes place at that time, it is unlikely given how uh, the the vast amount of evidence in a case like this that needs to be accumulated and provided to the various parties. So it's unlikely that that will result in a hearing that day. I suspect down the road, uh, after consultation with these other attorneys, that we'll probably have a, a larger scale preliminary hearing probably held here in the Bradford County Courthouse to accommodate the number of attorneys and the number of parties involved in that hearing that would be scheduled at a later date most likely. The last thing I can tell you this morning, um, Pennsylvania law does allow for the death penalty. And the death penalty is a something that uh, it would be potentially, based on the allegations you may have read in the police criminal complaint and affidavit of probable cause, the death penalty could be appropriate in this case. Currently under Pennsylvania law, a single aggravating circumstance is required to justify the death penalty's application under Pennsylvania law. And in this case, the fact that a one-year-old child was present at the time of the death of Michael Pruitt, that could be an aggravating circumstance to justify the Commonwealth seeking the death penalty in this case. Now, that is not a decision I can make based on the evidence that I have before me at this time, but I would expect to make that decision at some point following that preliminary hearing, but before the formal arraignment, which would be scheduled at a later date. That's something that I, as the district attorney, have to evaluate, I have to weigh all of the factors you know, that support that, evaluate the evidence, and make that decision at a later date. Thank you, and if you have any questions, we'll do our best to answer. We, yes, sir. We heard in that day the probable cause um, the allegations against the victim. Did custody over the children play a part in any of this? I don't, I think we could have uh, another, one of the investigating officers answer that. To my knowledge, as he has indicated, there's been no indication to law enforcement that there was a, uh, uh, any sort of an action started as far as that is concerned. And at this point, I can tell you that I'm not aware of any information that would support that unless somebody else would like to add to that. That's it.
question. Where's me? Um, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yep, no <laughs> Can problem. you explain um, why we should support him with conspiracy, even though there's text messages? Yeah, conspiracy under Pennsylvania law is uh, when parties uh, come together with a plan, an agreement to commit a crime. And the text messages that you're referring to that are outlined in that affidavit of a probable cause do suggest a meeting of the minds, an agreement of the parties to commit a crime. So, and how it works under Pennsylvania law, if a person is guilty of conspiracy to commit a crime, they are guilty of the crime itself, even though they may not have been the principal who committed the entire act. Yes, sir. I might have missed it in the criminal complaint, but I didn't see it where, uh, address where the victim lived. Did he live at that location where the murder took place, or did he was his residence someplace else? The information in the affidavit of probable cause suggests that he was not living at that address, and I think that uh, you'll that would suggest that he was brought there by the parties. Okay, do you Perhaps know where, where, where he did, where, where his permanent residence was located? I don't have that information at this time. Yes. You spoke with um, a neighbor who complained to, um, I think, police about um, dog abuse and horses on the um, property. Is there any other circumstances against um, Harry and Rhonda prior to that? Um, that are part of this investigation that I am privy to at this time, no. What about outside the current investigation? The, not that I have that information as far as uh, actual complaints that would have been something that would have risen to the level of, of, of a allegation of a crime committed by Rhonda Parker who was living at that residence, no. Yes, ma'am. Can you clarify the relationship between Harry and Rhonda? Are they still legally married, divorced, separated? I think the status of those two parties is legally married, however separated. And do any of them have any prior violent criminal history? The um, that information will be available at a later date. The the answer, the short answer is yes, um, as to at least one of those parties. Yes, sir. When will we expect those charges to come about? If any? That is a good question. The investigation is continuing, and as we're adding and accumulating this evidence as my office gathers this information we will make decisions about refining charges and potentially adding charges down the road I can tell you that based on the you know for example we may see the charge of criminal homicide we may see that modified to just be a charge of first-degree murder for example those are something that under the Pennsylvania law currently criminal homicide encompasses both of the manslaughters, voluntary and involuntary, as well as first, second, and third degree murder. And I can tell you that uh, that charge of criminal homicide at this stage of the proceedings would be appropriate because not all that information is out there. And when we have that information to refine that, we will do so. I would expect that that will be uh, something that would be refined in much greater detail at the time of the preliminary hearing or around that time, which should be scheduled uh, if it's not that March 27th date, it would be something that would be scheduled uh, shortly thereafter, within a month, a month or so. Um, yes. Has it been a while since Bradford County has seen a case as gruesome as this or like this? I can't comment on to the gruesome nature of it at this point. That wouldn't be appropriate for me to do. That's a conclusion that uh, folks can draw themselves by looking back and the affidavit of probable cause and as information uh, unfolds. I really can't comment on that, but I can tell um, those in attendance that this is not, uh, that Bradford County is not uh, unique when it comes to um, murders. We've had our share over the years. I've been, been involved in death cases um, professionally as a lawyer in this county and uh, over the years, and so we are not immune from that. You know, I um, see a reference to body in the car, and it's because perhaps the ice cream was when the brother was the family. I don't have any information on that at this time that I can share, but I do expect that to be a subject of, of questioning down the road. Okay. One moment. Do we, any of you, you would you like to add anything?
sure I'm not, I don't want to take up all the time myself, but is there any other questions? And I thank you very much for your time. Thank you. There will be more information coming. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.